Hey traders, I wanted to go ahead and throw up a timestamp for you right here beside me because this video did end up being quite long and for good reason. There's a lot to go over whenever it comes to chart patterns. The first 10 minutes of this video is going to be me discussing the top three things I struggled with at the beginning of my career in terms of chart patterns that caused me to lose money while trading them and how I fixed those mistakes in order for chart patterns to become one of the most profitable ways that I trade today. So I would highly suggest that you listen to those first 10 minutes. But for those of you who are like, I have to see charts, I did put on the timestamp where I start talking about my rules for chart patterns and even where I start going over full strategies a little later on the video. But again, if you're serious about your trading, then you'll listen up to these first 10 minutes. With that said, let's go ahead and get started. Instead of making this intro super long by reading through everything that's included in this video, just check out the timestamp. That's everything that's included. If you see something you think is gonna be helpful for you, feel free to smash that like button. Make sure you're subscribed for more free content. And I'll see you guys on the other side of the intro and disclaimer. Welcome back. And we're going to go ahead and get started with mistake number one that I made and that I see traders making all too often, which is not having objective rules for chart patterns. This means you look at a chart, right? And you say to yourself, oh, that looks like a double bottom or that looks like a head and shoulder pattern, but you don't really know if it's correct or not. Imagine this scenario. So, you look at a chart and you see what you think is a double bottom, but you don't have rules for a double bottom. So you're not really sure if this chart pattern is correct. So you decide to skip the entry. You don't place the trade. You come back to your computer a few hours later to see that the market shot up like a rocket ship would have hit multiple targets and made you a lot of money. So you kick yourself and go, man, I knew it looked like a double bottom should have been in that trade. If you haven't been through that yet in your trading career, then just give it a minute. I'm sure you will at some point. I know I've been through that before myself. And let's go ahead now into a, a different scenario. Scenario number two, you look at a chart, a stick with double bottom. You see what you think is a double bottom, or we'll do head and shoulders this time. You see what you think is a head and shoulders pattern. So you place your trade, right? And you're all excited. I know I traded that correctly. It looked like a head and shoulder pattern, so I should be good to go. The trade goes on to lose. And then you come back to your computer and you're staring at your chart for 30 minutes asking yourself, was that really a head and shoulders pattern? If this is something you've been through, leave a comment below to let other traders know that they're not alone. I know it's something I've been through personally. And all of this confusion, frustration, and inconsistency is due to not having rules for your chart patterns. That's why it's so important. Not having rules for chart patterns would be like trying to cook a really good meal with no recipe whatsoever. Unless you're a culinary expert, chances are you're going to be ordering a pizza later that night because you didn't have a recipe to tell you exactly what to do. Whereas if you have a recipe, then that recipe is going to ensure that you're taking the correct steps and that you know exactly how to prepare that specific dish. In trading, we want rules so that we know exactly when to use chart patterns so that we avoid inconsistency and confusion and we ensure that we can be consistent and avoid making mistakes when identifying chart patterns. Now, later in the video, I am going to go over my exact rules for chart patterns. We just talked about the mistake and what you need to do to avoid it, which is make rules later in the video. When we fix the mistakes, which is my plan for later on, I'm actually going to give you my exact rules for double bottoms, double tops, head and shoulder patterns and inverse head and shoulder patterns. But before that, I want to make it all the way through the mistakes first. So mistake, Number two is trading chart patterns in the middle of nowhere. Let's dive into that right now. So what does it mean to trade chart patterns in the middle of nowhere? Well, it just means to trade them with no other confluence. And I remember whenever I first started trading, I'll admit it, I would go out into the market, I would see a double bottom and I would buy. Why? Because I saw somebody on YouTube tell me that a double bottom meant a reversal. I had no other confluence. I wasn't looking at higher time frame trend or structure levels or any other indicators or any other confluence at all. And I was expecting that chart pattern to work and I would lose trades constantly because of it. Now, that's not because chart patterns don't work. That's because no matter what you're trading, whether it be chart patterns, candlestick patterns, something based on indicators, 
There is no one thing that will create profits. I didn't understand that whenever I first started trading. I always was looking for the one thing. I was looking for the magic indicator. I was looking for the magic candlestick pattern or the magic chart pattern that would be profitable with nothing else. And that doesn't exist. Instead, what we have to do is combine a number of technical factors, including the chart patterns, in order to create an edge or an advantage or a money-making strategy in any market. We need to add things like higher time frame trend and structure levels, like areas of value based on indicators, like trend based on indicators, like the market being oversold and creating divergence on double bottoms. These are all factors that we can add to chart patterns to make them go from something that is nearly irrelevant to a rules-based strategy we can use to make money over time. Just to drive this point home a little further, let me give you an analogy. Let's say that you're having a house built and the contractor comes up to you and he says, hey, sorry, uh, all we have is the wood for this job. You look over, you see a bunch of two by fours, two by sixes and plywood laying on the ground. And he goes, there's nothing I can do about it. What's my point? My point is having wood is not all you need to build a house. You're gonna need roofing supplies, like shingles or metal, depending on what you choose. You're gonna need bathroom supplies, like a sink, a tub, a shower. You're gonna need nails and screws to put the wood together. So wood is a great thing to have when you're building a house, but it's not all you need. And in the same way, double tops, double bottoms, chart patterns in general are a great thing to have when you're building a strategy and you're building a trading plan, but they're not going to be all you need. We need to add other factors with them in order to ensure that they become a profitable strategy for us. This is a huge mistake that I made towards the beginning of my trading career and one that I hope this video helps you to avoid. And later on, I will be going through a number of different factors. We'll actually be creating an entire rules-based strategy around head and shoulder patterns and double tops and bottoms. But again, for now, I wanna go ahead and get through the rest of the mistakes. So let's move on to mistake number three. Mistake number three that I definitely made and that I see traders making all the time is not being consistent with chart patterns. And by consistency, I don't mean consistent in the way that you trade them. We talked about this a little bit before in the story I told at the very beginning of the video, but a big mistake for me was going out and taking five trades based on chart patterns, losing three out of five, three out of five, and then just giving up on chart patterns altogether and switching strategies to something completely different. This is the downfall of so many traders that it's not even funny. And it's something that nearly caused me to never become a profitable trader because I would constantly switch strategies after a sample size of like five trades or 10 trades. And I would go, oh, I lost six out of 10. Uh, this doesn't work, right? And that may be something that you're dealing with right now. So what I wanna give you as an example, let's say you're flipping a quarter and you flip that quarter 10 times. We know that a quarter has two sides, right? Which means you have a 50% chance of hitting heads, a 50% chance of hitting tails. But if you only flip that quarter 10 times, it's not going to be tails five times and heads five times very often. You're likely gonna get six and four, seven and three, two and eight sometimes, because 10 flips of that coin is nowhere near large enough of a sample size for you to determine that that has a 50% chance. In the same way in trading, we can't look at just 10 trades we placed with chart patterns and go, oh, this doesn't work. We need a much larger sample size. And before that, we need to build an entire strategy. So what we're gonna do in order to fix this issue is I'm gonna teach you how to do something called backtesting. So in backtesting, we're gonna look at 100 instances where our rules-based strategy happened in historic data, and we're gonna gather that data and then we're gonna judge the strategy based on that data that we now have. If the data turns out that we have a 60% chance to win with a greater than one to one reward to risk ratio, then we have what is known as an edge, an advantage. We have a money making strategy that we can stick to. So those are the three mistakes that I see traders making the most. And those are the three mistakes that were the most difficult mistakes for me to get past when trading chart patterns. Now what I wanna do 
is move on to showing you how to fix them. In order to do that, we're gonna dive down into some charts and I'm gonna share with you my actual rules for double bottoms and double tops and head and shoulder patterns and inverse head and shoulder patterns. So let's go ahead and dive into that right now and I'll see you there. Okay, so now we made it to the good stuff. If you guys made it through all of that talking, it was some really important points that I did wanna get across before teaching you the entire strategy and the rules I have for these chart patterns. If you made it through all of that, that is awesome. Thank you so much. Go ahead and give this video a like if you've gotten value from it so far. And now we're gonna take a look at the actual rules I have for double bottoms first, and then we'll move on to the rest of the chart patterns. So really, really simple here. As you can see, this is the double bottom pattern that we are going to be looking at, but for the purpose of this video, what I'm gonna do is put on market replay mode so you can see exactly what I would be doing after the first bottom was made. So after we see a first bottom, this looks like what? This looks like a regular pullback. But what this is, is a situation where we could possibly see a double bottom and a reversal. Now, what are the rules for that double bottom? As I mentioned earlier, you always wanna have rules for each chart pattern that you're gonna be trading. My rule for these is that I make a box from the lowest body of the swing low to the lowest low of the swing low. We'll do that with horizontal lines to make it easier to see. So that would look like this right here. This would be the zone that I want price to test but not close below. What does that mean? That means that price can come down with candles and I can see a wick come into this zone. I can even see a body close right here in this zone. I can see a wick come past this zone. All of that would be a valid double bottom for me, but what I cannot see is price come down and then a candle close below this zone. And the logic behind this is that a close below a previous low, like we have right here, indicates further down pressure and indicates that we could be seeing a continuation of this downtrend that we have. So I want market to stop before this low, but I want it to at least test the lowest body of this swing low. So this is what that looks like with real candles. If I click forward a bit, you'll see that we now have a test of our first bottom, bottom, excuse me, giving us a double bottom, but we don't have any candles that are closing below our wick. So the market's showing us rejection from our first bottom by doing this. And with that being the case, now seeing rejection from that, this would already qualify as a double bottom for me. Now, I do not trade just because I see a double bottom. We're going to get into entries and a lot of other factors that we add to these types of chart patterns a little bit later in the video. But right now, I want to go through all the rules that I have for double bottoms, double tops, head and shoulder patterns, and inverse head and shoulder patterns. A question I get asked a lot on double bottoms is how many candles do I need to see right here in the middle. I don't necessarily have a rule for this, but if you wanted to create a rule, you could say that you need to see between five and let's say 25 candles between your first bottom and your second bottom. That's just a way to give you an objective rule. That's not what I use. I don't really have a rule for that. I just wanna make sure this looks like an upside down V when I'm looking for chart patterns. And I know that's subjective, but I've been doing this for a really long time and I don't really need a rule for that personally. Again, if you do use five, to 25 candles in between for your double bottoms. Now, as we can see, this double bottom did happen and played out really nicely. Again, we'll go over entry stops and targets a little bit later on in the video. Right now, I wanna go over double tops. So now that we've looked at a double bottom, let's find a double top and do the same thing. And ironically, really close by, we have a good example of a double top. So this is what we're looking at for a double top right here. And what I'm gonna do is the same thing I did with double bottoms. We're getting into market replay mode, and I'm gonna show you what I would do after the first pullback. At this point, what does it look like? It looks like we're in the middle of what? A pullback. We have a push higher, pullback, push higher, pullback. At this point, the only way for us to define a double top is to wait for price to get to our area. Go ahead and see if you can assume or guess where my area is going to be. My area. Is going to be from the top of the bodies of the swing high to the very high of the wick of the swing high and that looks like this top of the bodies top of the wick we now have a zone where i want to see price touch and test and be rejected from so in this case what i can see is the market can move up and i can have just a wick come into this zone i can have a body of a candle close in this zone i can even have 
wicks that go up past the zone. All of that is valid for a double bottom for me, excuse me, a double top for me. What I don't want to see is trend continuation. I'm on the market coming up here and then creating a candle that closes above this high of the double top for the same reason as we didn't want something or a candle, excuse me, closing below the first low of the double bottom. This insinuates trend continuation to the upside. I'm not going to be trying to trade a double top to the downside when I have a close above candle. So those are my rules for a double top. Again, if you need rules for in between, use 5 to 25. And let's see how this played out. If we click play, do we have a valid double top right now? Yes, we do. Why is that the case? Well, we have the market rejecting this area by not closing above our previous high. So with that being the case, we have a valid double top. Now this specific trade took a while, a little bit of consolidation here before it actually pushed lower, but this double top did push the market lower eventually in a dramatic way. So that is my rules for a double top and a double bottom. If you want a more detailed version of that, since I kind of sped through it for this video, the reason I did that is because I have a full length video just going over double tops and bottoms that will give you everything you need to understand these two patterns and that'll be right up here in the top right hand corner of the screen you'll see a little card pop up right now so with that being the case and now that you know my rules for double bottoms and double tops let's move on and talk about my rules for head and shoulder patterns and inverse head and shoulder patterns after that we're going to be talking about and building out a full strategy by adding other technical factors to these patterns in order to make them strategies we can stay consistent to and that can make us money over time. All right, so what we have here is a valid head and shoulders pattern according to my rules. This may not look like a perfect head and shoulders pattern and that's on purpose. I'm not here to show you absolutely perfect examples. I wanna show you real time examples that you can actually take and apply to real markets. And this is a real time example of a head and shoulders pattern that meets all of my rules. Let's talk about why doing the same exact thing that we did last time by placing the market in market replay mode, which makes it really easy for me to teach. So at this point, what do we have? We have a market pushing up, pushing down, pushing back up. What we call this is our right shoulder and the head of our pattern. The rules for this is we need a break and close below and a higher high, excuse me, I said below, a break and close above and a higher high than our previous high in order to count this as the head of the pattern. Once we have the head of the pattern, the next thing I wait for, this is my first rule after getting the head of the pattern, is I wait for the market to come down and retest the first shoulder. So if we're drawing this out as a trend, we would see the market pushing up to a high, pulling back to our shoulder, and pushing up to a new high. This pullback to our shoulder, I put a horizontal line on the lowest bodies of that pullback. What I want to see, and also on the lowest low of that pullback. What I want to see is similar to the double top and double bottom thing. I want to see the market come down and test this area. I do not want to see a candle close below it. What I want to see is that the market has come down and tested this area with either a wick or a body can close in it and a wick can go past it. The only thing I can't see is a body closing below this area. So anything else is fine as long as we test and reject this area to the upside. So let's see what price does as I click play. Right there, we have a test of this area with this candle wick right here. So right now my rule number one is met, which is a test of the bottom of the previous shoulder. So that would be this zone right here, which did get tested right here. My next rules are that, since we already have that one done, and I'll just leave that here in case I need to do another example. My next rules are that I want to see price come up at least to the right shoulder, but price cannot touch the head of the pattern. Let me make these a little bit bigger. It might be difficult to see. There and there is my termination point for my second rule. What this means is I want to see price push up and at least test this shoulder. And as long as price does not push up all the way to our head of the pattern and touch it, I don't want to see the market touch that head of the pattern whatsoever. If it does, it's an invalid trade, turns into more of a double top than a head and shoulder pattern. So what I'm, waiting, what I'm waiting for is this area to be my termination zone. And again, this area is between the bodies of the candles, the highest bodies of my right shoulder, 
and the highest bodies of the head of the pattern. That is the termination zone for what is considered our left shoulder. So at this point, we know we can see price or we must see price at least touch 129.57 because that's the highest bodies of our right shoulder. We know that price cannot touch the highest bodies of the head of our pattern. As long as that happens and we see a push lower, we have a valid head and shoulders pattern. Let's see what price does. Eventually we push down and we break through the neckline. And I do need a break through the neckline zone in order to classify this as a valid head and shoulder pattern. Now, let's go through that really quickly one more time to make sure you understand it. We need the creation of a right shoulder. We need price to break above that right shoulder. We then need the creation of the head, which just means we need to start seeing a pullback. The initial thing we're looking for with that pullback is that it comes down and tests the bottom of our right shoulder. We want it to at least test the bodies of that swing low, but we do not want to see price close below the low of that swing low. As long as we get that, as we do here, and the market starts pushing higher, we now have another zone to pay attention to between the highest bodies of our right shoulder and the highest bodies of the head of our head and shoulders pattern. This is the termination zone for our left shoulder, which is this right here. As long as we have the market pushing down, following rule number one, pushing back up, not touching the head of our pattern, and at least testing the right shoulder, then we have a valid head and shoulders pattern as long as we break through this neckline zone with a candle. In this case, we did, and the market continued lower, which of course will not always happen, but in this specific situation, it did. So those are the rules for my head and shoulders pattern. I know that was a long one, but we're gonna dissect the rules for an inverse head and shoulders. We're gonna go over that a little bit more quickly since you now kind of comprehend the way these rules work. So let's take a look at that inverse head and shoulders pattern. Then we'll dive into a complete strategy using these chart patterns combined with other technical factors to create a money-making trading strategy. An inverse head and shoulders pattern is just a head and shoulders pattern flipped upside down and looks a little bit like this. This is the one we're gonna be taking a look at as an example and just with every other pattern. I'm gonna go ahead and put on market replay mode to ensure that I can teach this in the best way possible as if you were actually looking at it on a real chart. So if we're looking, this, looking at this on a real chart and analyzing it, we can see that we have a push down to a shoulder, which is actually right here. The reason I just did that, let me explain that to make it easier as well. Here we have a low, but here, let me draw it out, we have a lower low. With that being the case, this is what our pattern would look like. It would go to there since that's the lower low. Then we have our first shoulder pushing up to this high right here. We then need what in order to classify ahead? We need the market to break through this low. Since we did break and close below and create a new low down here, we now have a left shoulder and a head. What are we looking for at this point? What would you expect us to be looking for based on what you know about the regular head and shoulders pattern we just looked up? Well, we wanna see the market test this area. Let me make these black. That might be hard to see with everything being blue. So we wanna see the market test this area right here. Why? Because this is the area between the bodies of this pullback and the wick of this pullback. With that being the case, this is the area we want price to test. How do we want it to test this area? We want price to push up and at least touch this area with a wick. We can see a body close in this area. We can see a wick go above it. What we do not want to see is price push up higher and end up creating a higher high right here in price compared to the previous high over here. So let's press play and see what happens. Right there, do we have a test of our zone that does not close above our zone. Yes, we do. So at this point, what are we looking for? We already have the test of our zone. And if this pattern is just the opposite of the regular head and shoulders pattern, then we would make a zone out of the bodies of the left shoulder along with the bodies of the head of this pattern. This is the termination zone that we're looking for for our next rule. What does that mean? That means we wanna see price now pull back and at least touch this area. But what we don't want to see is price come all the way down and touch the head of the pattern. If we get a touch of the head of this pattern, then it invalidates the pattern. But as long as we get a test 
of the previous shoulder, then we're good to go to start looking for that break to the upside. So this is the area that we're paying attention to for our next rule. It is gonna be between this shoulder and the head of the pattern. So let's see what price does. As we push up, we do push up a bit higher right here, but we do not close above our zone. So with that being the case, is this still valid? Yes, it is. And we're still looking for the test of our previous shoulder. So let's go ahead and see what happens with price. We push down, we test that shoulder. We now have a break of our neckline zone. This is all turning into a valid head and shoulders pattern. So we're gonna go through that really quickly one more time. What we're looking for is the push down, which we have right here. We're looking for the first shoulder to create a pullback. We're looking for a break through that pullback to create the head of the pattern. At that point, we create a zone with the top of our first shoulder. That zone needs to be tested, but cannot be closed above. We then wanna see a pullback from that zone to our second zone. Our second zone is between the left shoulder and the head of the head and shoulders pattern. Once we get a test of that zone, we know we're looking for the break of the top zone for a valid head and shoulders pattern. What we don't wanna see is something like this where the market comes down and then we touch the head of the pattern. That's more of a double bottom, not really a head and shoulders pattern anymore, so that invalidates head and shoulders patterns. But as long as we just get a touch of the zone and we get a breakout above our first zone, we have a valid inverse head and shoulders pattern. So those are my rules for each of the patterns that we learned. That takes care of mistake number one, which if you remember, mistake number one was not having rules around chart patterns. At this point, you should have solid and set in stone rules for each of these two slash four chart patterns. And now what we're gonna do is move on to actually adding other confluences and other conditions to this so you're not trading chart patterns in the middle of nowhere and that is called creating a strategy. So let's move on to creating a strategy right now. So anytime you're building a strategy around anything, not just chart patterns, there's a system I like to use that I created that's called CEST. And what CEST stands for, and I know what you're thinking, I have great handwriting, is conditions, entries, stops, and targets. So when you're thinking about building rules around a full strategy, not just around chart patterns, right? When you think about building rules around a full strategy by adding these confluences, you wanna have rules for the conditions before you look for your actual entry. You wanna have rules for why do you press the buy or sell button? What is your exact entry? You wanna have rules for where is your stop loss going to go? And ideally, you wanna have rules for a target, but there are some traders, including myself at times, that do subjective targets, which you can do once you become more experienced. But in a nutshell, what you wanna make sure is that you have rules for conditions, entry, stops, and targets, and that's what we're gonna dive into now is conditions, entry, stops, and targets for the strategy we're going to... Almost got him. Can y'all see that? There's a gnat in here for the strategy that you are about to learn. So let's get down to some charts and actually talk about some of the things we can add to chart patterns in order to turn them into strategies. Because if you remember, the mistake number two was trading these patterns with no other confluence. Let's start adding confluence and see what kind of strategy we can come up with. There are two different ways I like to trade these chart patterns. One is the typical reversal chart pattern, and that's the one we're gonna go over first. So let's go ahead and talk about it really quickly. In order to trade a reversal, it would look something like this. We may see a market pushing lower, price pushing lower, pushing lower, and then we may see a head and shoulders pattern that signals a reversal in price to start heading higher. This would be an example of an inverse head and shoulders reversal pattern. In the same way, we may see a market pushing higher, pushing higher, price going higher, and then we may see a double top, the break of the neckline, and that signals a reversal to the downside. This is the typical way that you will see these chart patterns traded. And now that you have exact rules for each of these patterns, 
that you know exactly when they actually happen. You're no longer confused about how to spot them. We're going to start to add different confluences in order to build an entire strategy and a very simple way. And again, one of my favorite ways to trade chart patterns as reversals is by simply adding an RSI indicator and using this RSI indicator as my signal that we're ready to reverse. And what I mean by that is when the RSI is oversold, it's telling you that the price of an asset has been pushing down for a while. We know that what goes up must come down. And in the same way with financial markets, what goes down eventually will go back up as well, at least for the most part. And with that being the case, what we're looking for now is going to be these same price patterns, these same chart patterns you've learned the rules to already to happen when markets get oversold for an inverse head and shoulder pattern. We would look for the market to go into an oversold situation. We would then have specific rules for our entry stops and targets. Again, this is going to be our condition. We're going to do this on some real charts. I just wanted to give you a quick overview. The opposite would be true for a double top or a regular head and shoulder pattern. We would be waiting for the market to double top, but only trading that double top if the market has went overbought because that overbought condition is telling us that this market is primed to have a possible reversal. Again, we'll go down some charts and talk about entries, stops and targets. And I'll give you examples of full trades. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, here we are on the four hour chart of the Aussie yen. I want you to see if you can spot the head and shoulders pattern here. Hopefully you were able to, it is right here. Quite easy to see this one. It's nearly a perfect head and shoulders pattern. And is our other condition met that we've already talked about? Did price go into the overbought area of the RSI while creating this head and shoulders pattern? Yes, it did. So let's go ahead and talk about what would happen if we were actually seeing price create this head and shoulders pattern as we have throughout the video. So right here, we already have what we call our first shoulder, right? It's right here. What's the next steps we're looking for? We want a test of this area here, the bottom part of our first shoulder. We need price to come down and test that. Does it? Yes, it does. Once we've tested that, we need price to then push up and at least touch the bodies of our first shoulder, but price cannot touch the highest bodies of the head of the pattern. So here we get the touch of the previous shoulder without pushing up and touching the head of our pattern. Do we have a valid possible head and shoulders pattern right now? Yes, we do. Now, again, as mentioned for conditions, these are our conditions for the actual pattern itself. Another condition is the market must be overbought at the head of the pattern. Let's put a vertical line here. As you can see here, this green line is showing the head of the pattern. And yes, the market is still above the 70 line of the RSI. By the way, my settings for the RSI are exactly as they come. I just have a 14 period RSI. So with all of this coming together, we now have a valid strategy, not just a valid head and shoulders pattern, but we have a valid head and shoulders pattern when the market is primed to reverse coming out of an overbought situation. So at this point, all we need right now, what do we have? We have all the conditions met. Now we need to know how we're going to enter this market. Well, to confirm this head and shoulders pattern, I need to see a break and close below the lowest body of the neckline. So this is what's considered the neckline. The two, the bottom of the two shoulders is considered the neckline of this pattern. What I need to see is a break and close below the lowest body of that neckline. So let's go ahead and get rid of these lines to make this easier. At this point, all we're waiting on for an entry is a close below that body of this neckline, the lowest body of the neckline. Let's see what price does. We move forward and move forward again. Yes, we get that close right here on this candle. So at this point, when we're creating a strategy, we have our conditions met. Our conditions are we have all the conditions met for a head and shoulders pattern. The market's coming out of a valid overbought situation telling us that this market is primed for a reversal after conditions we then looked for entries our entry specifically was the breakout of the neckline of the head and shoulder pattern and very specifically was the breaking close below the lowest body of that neckline 
So at this point, we have a valid entry. Let's go ahead and put a position tool on right here for a stop loss here on the four hour chart to make things very simple. I'm going to use 20 pips above the entry candle. Now for stops and targets, it's completely up to you what you use. This is just an example strategy and I'm just showing you how you would go about building a full strategy using these chart patterns. For me, let's go 20 pips above the entry candle. That'd be about 81 pips. And for targets, I personally normally go for about a 1.4 to 1 with my first targets and I have two separate positions. That's way too complicated to get into in this video that's already going to be lengthy. So you can either do a straight 1.4 to 1 reward to risk, which is what we're going to do throughout the video. But some other examples of things you could do is you could go with a 2 to 1 reward to risk ratio or you can come down to the next previous level of structure that you think the market will bounce off of to the upside. So with that being the case, let's hit play. And this trade worked out pretty well if you took a either two to one or a 1.4 to one. But if you would have tried for those extended targets, it looks like you would have been stopped out in that case. But again, that's an example of the full strategy. At this point, we have conditions with the conditions for our pattern and our condition of being overbought on the RSI. We also have our entry, which is a close below that neckline. We also have stops, which in this case was 20 pips above our entry candle. And we had targets, which for me are going to be a 1.4 to 1 on the rest of these examples. So that was a full overview of the strategy. We're now going to take a look at this full reversal strategy on each and every one of these chart patterns, starting now with the, the inverse head and shoulders pattern, which is just the opposite of this flipped upside down. Let's go take a look at that right now. Okay, so this one's a little bit less clean of a pattern, but guess what guys, that's exactly what markets look like at times. You're not gonna have the cleanest looking pattern every single time you place a trade. So why don't you go ahead and see if you can spot this inverse head and shoulders pattern based on the rules you have learned so far in this video. Hopefully you were able to see it. It is in fact right here. And let's go ahead and confirm that by checking our rules. We have a push down. After this push down, we wanna look for the lowest low which is right here for our first bottom. And that is our right shoulder. We then get a pullback and then a break. Break down means that we now have a shoulder and a head to this pattern. We then want to see what? We want to see price come up and test between the highest bodies and the highest highs of our initial shoulder pullback right here. So what we want to see is price come into this area, but not close above it. Do we get that right here? Yes, we do. As I said before, a wick can go above this area. That's totally fine. I just want to see the closing prices and opening prices not go above it. So in this case, we have a valid right shoulder or second shoulder. Now, what's our next rule? Our next rule is we need price to pull back and touch between the lowest body of our first shoulder and it cannot touch the head of our pattern being the lowest body of the head of that pattern. So with this being the case, do we have a valid shoulder here? Yes, we do. Price comes down and tests this area without touching the head of the pattern. Now with all of this coming together, this is all of our conditions for a valid inverse head and shoulders pattern. What's our other condition? We have our pattern. We also need to see oversold in this case on the RSI indicator because oversold means we're primed for a reversal to the upside. So if we have those two things coming together, we can actually go from looking for conditions to looking for entries. If for a bearish entry, we're looking for a close below the bodies of the neckline, what do you think we're looking for on a bullish entry? We would be looking for the close above the highest body of the neckline of this pattern, which is right here. If we look at this neckline in total, we have bodies of candles right here for the neckline and the highest bodies of the neckline is actually the next neckline part of this pattern, which is right here. So with this being the case, we have an entry on this candle, the close of this big green candle. We're using a 20 pip stop loss below the low 62. That would be an 82 pip stop. And for those of you going, how did he get 62? 62 is to the bottom of this candle and I'm adding 20 pips. Next up, we're looking for targets. What did I say before? We're going to do a one 0.4 reward to risk ratio for these examples. This 
easily got hit here for the inverse head and shoulders pattern. So again, we're just using exactly what we've learned about these chart patterns. We're then adding the condition of coming out of either oversold or overbought, depending on the direction we're looking to trade. And we're adding confluence for an entry. We're adding rules for stops and targets. Again, the best way to build a strategy is by looking for conditions, entries, stops, and targets, and being sure that you have all of these in place before you ever place your trade, which is what we're accomplishing with this strategy. Now that we've looked at the head and shoulders and inverse head and shoulders reversal patterns, reversal strategies, let's now go move on to the double bottom and double top reversal strategies. Okay, so here we're looking at price as it would be before even looking for this pattern. And for a double bottom, all we need to see is that one of the bottoms goes into the oversold area on the RSI, oversold is below 30, on this RSI again, it's just regular factory settings for the RSI. Now, let's remember what we're looking for in terms of a valid double bottom. What we wanna see is price come down and terminate between the lowest bodies and the lowest low of our first bottom, which would be this little box right here. So what we wanna see is price come down, at least test this box. We can have a wick go below it. We can have a body close in it. What we don't want to see is price come down in the body of a candle close below it because that's telling us trend continuation to the downside. We actually want to see a double bottom here. So with that being the case, let's move price forward, see what we get slash if we get that retest of this area and eventually we do. Okay, now we have tested this area. As for an entry on this specific pattern for this specific strategy, what we're gonna look for is a candle close above the top of the neckline the bodies of the top of the neckline. So there is a line for that. As you can see, that is the top of the bodies of the neckline of this pattern. So let's move the chart forward here, see if we eventually get an entry. Not yet, and now, perfect. Now we have an entry. Now for a double bottom, that would be our entry and same thing. We will go 20 pips below our entry candle. The entry candle is right here. So we will have a stop loss at 14 plus 20 which is gonna be 34 pips. And we will have a 1.4 to one reward to risk ratio, which is right up here. Now, of course, if you would like to test this and use this strategy the same exact way, but put your stop loss below the, net, uh, the lows of the double bottom, that is totally fine. Again, I'm just giving you an example of how you can build strategies around these patterns. So. Here's an example of how you could do it. Of course, you could put your stop loss below the lows of the double bottom as well if that's something you'd like to do. Let's click play and see what happens. Oh no, but Steven, I thought every pattern was supposed to win. Just kidding about that. Of course, you will have losses. That's why I wanted to throw this in here because it was a perfect example of a double bottom that met all of the conditions, but lost. And guess what guys, losing is a part of trading. It happens, but Either way, win or lose, this was a really good example of creating that strategy out of a double bottom using the condition of waiting for the strategy to be, or the price, excuse me, and the RSI indicator to be oversold, showing you primed for a reversal. This was just an instance where the market did not cooperate with that analysis. With that said, let's go take a look at the opposite of this, which would be a double top reversal right now. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at a double top. And if you look all back through here, on the RSI, every bit of this, the market is trending up. But this is why we wait for an overbought situation to tell us that this market is primed for a possible reversal. We don't just wait for that, right? That's our first step. So right now, do we have our first step complete? If you were actually trading this or testing this type of strategy, you would be looking for this. You would see, okay, we have an overbought situation and a pullback. What's our next steps? Double top means we come back up and we retest this top. So let's put our box where we need to, which is between the highs of the wicks, the highs of the bodies of the first top. Let's click play. Eventually, do we get a test of that first top? Right here, the market does test that with a wick. We do not get a body closing above this area. So therefore, we have a valid double top. Now, with the double bottom, we traded slash our entry was based on the break of the neckline. We're doing the same exact thing here. We're using the body of the neckline for the break, and we're gonna wait for a candle to close below the body of that neckline. So this is going to be our entry. Right now, we have a double top that happened 
while the market was overbought, all of that showing us possible reversal to the downside. Now we need our entry stops and targets because all of our conditions are now met. The entry being a break below our line here and a close below that line. Right here, we have that break and close. Now, a lot of people may be like, well, what about this? Isn't this showing us a, a new pattern? No, once I see the double top in real time and I have my line on the neckline, I'm just waiting for a break of that. I don't really care what happens in between. I'm waiting on the break of that neckline to show me price wants to go lower. And that's exactly what happened here. So we would have a short entry right there. We would have 20 pips above our entry candle, which would be 44 pips. We have 24 to the top of that candle. So it'd be 44 as the total stop loss. We would then have a 1.4 to one reward to risk ratio. Click play and price eventually does push down and hit that target for us. Again, this is the strategy that I wanted to teach you to give you a really good example of adding another confluence like a reversal scenario with the RSI indicator showing you a market is primed to reverse. Could you use other things? Yes, you could use RSI divergence as well. Looking at the price of the Aussie New Zealand having nearly equal highs and the RSI having extremely diverged highs, meaning lower highs. So with that being the case, you can add that as another confluence. You can also add structure levels looking left on higher time frames. You can add higher time frame trend. The amount of confluence you can add is nearly endless, but just remember that the frequency of trades you have with each confluence you add is going to drop dramatically because naturally you're looking for more things before you can enter the trade. So you want to keep that in mind. The more confluence you add, the less trades you will have throughout the year. So now that you know how I'm using these patterns as reversals, the second strategy I want to show you is how I like to use these patterns in trend continuation. So let's move on now to using chart patterns for trend continuation by adding a completely different confluence to them and using them at the end of pullbacks. I'll see you guys there. The typical way of using chart patterns is exactly like we just went over as reversals. But right now I want to tell you a really cool way that I use these types of chart patterns for trend continuation. And what that would look like is a market may have prices pushing higher, pushing higher, and then we may see a double bottom at the end of a pullback for a bullish trade. This is one of the ways I like to use double bottoms in trend continuation. We're going to talk about exact rules for it, but I do want to go over a brief overview with you right now. So that's what a bullish version of this would look like. For a bearish version, we may see prices pushing lower, pushing lower, and then we may see something like this at the top of a pullback. A head and shoulders pattern at the top of a pullback would signal that this market is going to continue in the overall bearish trend. So that's what we're going to be looking for on a chart. We're going to have a different type of confluence for this. And we're going to go over all of that. And I'm going to give you four real examples on real charts right now of how I use chart patterns in order to trade with the trend. Okay. So as for our confluence on this specific trend continuation strategy, the only thing we need to add to the chart is a 200 period EMA or exponential moving average. That's all this black line is. And that is going to be our trend filter. Now with the rules you already know about all of the price patterns and chart patterns we've discussed in this video, we're, al we're also going to be using the same exact entry we discussed on the reversal version of these patterns. So again, one of the only added confluences is that we have a 200 period moving average on the chart. Now, this is a really important part of this. What we want to see is price make a higher high like this right here. This is our higher high. Now the price pattern, the chart pattern that we use must be at the bottom of the pullback from our previous higher high. What I don't want to see is price doing this and then see a double bottom right here. I want to see this at the bottom of the pullback from our previous highest high. So let me show you an example of that. Right now, what we're going to be looking at is a double bottom. Just to give you a hint into this, we have a higher high. This is in fact the bottom of the pullback. We're going to put our box on that we've been discussing throughout the entire video. We're going to wait for price to get into that box. Once it does, we are then waiting for price to break and close above the bodies of the neckline of this double bottom. So let's push price forward. We do not ever close below this box, which tells us that we still have a valid double bottom. We'll continue pushing forward. 
and eventually we get a close above our neckline. Now, as I said, the entry is exactly the same as we discussed on the reversal pattern. The difference here is going to be that for trend continuation chart patterns, I'm going to be putting the stop loss below the previous low of this double bottom. So this is what that would look like. I'm still going to be looking for a 1.4 to 1 reward to risk ratio for these examples, but I do want to put a stop loss instead of being below my entry candle like we were doing on reversals below the ne uh, neckline, I keep saying that, below the bottom of this double bottom. The reason is in a pullback, this market is still considered to be in an uptrend until we break these lows. So I wanna make sure I'm safe with the way I'm placing my stops and targets. And then if I hit play, this specific trade did in fact push up and hit that target with ease. So that was an example of how I would use the double bottom chart pattern for trend continuation. We'll go over CEST. We have conditions, which are the conditions for our pattern itself. The other condition is that we are above the 200 EMA. If those two conditions are met, then I can look for my entry. What is my entry? A close above the neckline of this double bottom. I then have to place my stops and targets. And as we said, the stops are gonna go below the bottom of this double bottom. Targets at a 1.4 to one reward to risk is how I personally like to set targets. You can decide on stops and targets on your own when you're going through your back testing process, but that's what I like to use. So again, that was a good example of how I use the double bottom chart pattern for trend continuation. Let's now take a look at the double top chart pattern for trend continuation. So here on the Aussie Canada is our first condition met. Our first condition is we need to be below the 200 period moving average. So yes, that is met. Our second condition is just the rules we already have for a double top. So let's see what happens here with price. What are our rules for a double top? We wanna see the termination point be between the high and the bodies of that first top. Do we get that right here? Yes, we do. And another rule I have for these trend continuation setups is obviously my neckline cannot come all the way down to the previous low. That would just be consolidation. So as long as that neckline stays above the previous low, I still have a valid double top. In this case, I have that valid double top. And as long as no candle closes above that first top, then this stays a valid double top. With all my conditions now met, what do I need to focus on? The entry. What is the entry? Break and close below the neckline, the bodies of the neckline of the double top. So if we hit play, you'll see that we eventually do get that close below the bodies of the neckline. We have a entry right here, stop loss above the double top. We then have a, let me do this, 1.4 to one reward to risk ratio. And if I hit play, you will see that this trade eventually comes down to eventually, this is how trading goes sometimes guys. So I'm gonna let this run, hit your stop loss. <laughs> Isn't that, a shitty situation, right? Because you got really close to your target here. And then the market pushed back up, pushed back up and eventually stopped you out. Now this is the part of trading that most people do not like to discuss for whatever reason. They don't want you to think that it's a possibility that you're going to be frustrated, emotional and lose trades. This happens a decent amount when you're actually trading live and it's just a part of trading again i don't want to cherry pick the best examples possible of just winning trades and that's it i'd like to cherry pick examples that look really nice for you to be able to learn from but i also want to show you the reality of trading which is at times you will in fact lose trades but that was either way a really good example of how i would trade a double top in trend and it is something that has given me an advantage over a large sample size so Let's now move on to how I would trade the inverse head and shoulders pattern with the trend. So right now I want you to see if you can actually spot this inverse head and shoulders pattern before I point it out. Hopefully you were able to see it right here. It is a pretty large pattern, but this is what we're seeing. We have the market pushing down to a low, pushing back up to a initial shoulder, pushing down, breaking below that low for the head of our pattern. What's our rules now? Here is our termination box between the highs of those first candles right here and the bodies of those candles. Do we have a termination in that zone? We do. The next termination zone we have is down here between the lowest bodies of the first shoulder and we cannot touch the head of the pattern right here. Is that rule met with this candle? 
Yes, it is. So we'll go ahead and draw that out. We have a push up. We then have a pull back to this shoulder. What are we waiting on now? To enter this pattern, we're gonna enter in the same exact way. We're waiting for a break and close above the highest bodies of the neckline, which is right there. So I push the market forward. You will see that we do get that entry right here. So our first condition was what? We need to see price staying above the 200 period moving average. Our second condition was just the conditions for the head and shoulder pattern itself. Our entry was a close above that neckline. We now need to work on stops and targets for a head and shoulders pattern. I do things a little bit differently here as well. My entry would be the close of that candle, of course. My stop loss would go below the most recent shoulder, which is right here. And then I would also still have my 1.4 to 1 reward to risk. Again, that's my favorite target scenario. It gives me a better winning percentage and also keeps me above a 1 to 1 reward to risk ratio. Let's see how this bullish inverse head and shoulders pattern with the trend played out. As you can see, it did push up and eventually hit targets and move on to what would have been great targets eventually if you would have been patient and held on to this trade. But that's an example of how I trade inverse head and shoulder patterns with the trend and a full strategy you can now take and go test in the markets to see if it's profitable for you and to see if it's something you want to add to your trading arsenal the last strategy we're going to take a look at is how i trade regular head and shoulder patterns with the trend let's go ahead and go take a look at that right now okay so let's work through c e s t First, our conditions. Are we below the 200 period moving average? Meaning that overall, long term, we are in a downtrend. Yes, we are. Do we have the conditions met for a head and shoulders pattern? Yes, we do. Let's go ahead and discuss them one more time really, really quickly. Push up, shoulder, down, push up, head, down. We gotta terminate inside of our box right here. Do we do that? Yes, we do. We need to push up and at least touch the bodies of this shoulder without touching the head of the pattern. All of that's true, correct? Yes, it is. So since all of that is true, what are we waiting on now? We're waiting on a close below the lowest low of the neckline. Let's see what we get. Price eventually does in fact close below that. We would have an entry right there. Our stop loss for this specific pattern would be above the most recent shoulder. Since we have that in place, we can now set a target for me yet again, 1.4 to 1 reward to risk ratio, clicking play. And as you can see, price pushed down to more than hit those targets. Again, this is the full rule set for a strategy you can actually take and go test in the markets. You can test this because it has completely objective rules. We have an objective rule for being below the 200 period moving average. We have an objective rule for how we classify a valid head and shoulders pattern. We have objective rules for entries, stops, and targets. And my friends, this is exactly how you go about building a profitable and easy to stay consistent to trading strategy and eventually a trading plan Having a rules-based trading strategy like what I just taught you is absolutely necessary in order to become a consistently profitable trader. But it's not gonna be all that you need. You still need to take those rules, write them down, and then go back test them in historic data. Since they are objective rules and every part of your strategy is defined, that becomes a lot easier. Also, you need to create a risk management plan and a full trading plan built around the strategy you choose to trade and all of that is absolutely necessary as well and just as important as the strategy itself but it's not something I actually have time to get into in this video because it's already super long so if you're interested in some more advanced training then we do have a small amount of space available in the EAP training program we keep members limited because I answer every trading related question personally for every student so Yahoo Finance actually just did an article on the EAP training program. I will link that article below in the description. But in this program, what you'll learn essentially is more of the strategies that I use on a daily basis. You will also learn everything you need to know about risk management and about creating a full trading plan. It pretty much takes you step by step from wherever you are in your trading journey through the process of creating a profitable and a full trading plan. It also comes with what I call priority email, which means every single 
email that you send that is trading related about the course or about trading in general. It will be me personally answering those. It is a mentorship program and I'm here to guide you along your path to becoming a professional trader. On top of all of that, there is much more included that you can find out about in either this Yahoo Finance article or you can go over to eaptrainingprogram.com. Either way is fine. But on top of all of that, it also comes with a 60-day money-back guarantee, meaning that for any reason, if you decide that you don't feel as though the program is as valuable as you thought, or if you just decide you don't want to trade anymore, feel free to send my staff an email telling them your situation and I'll get you refunded ASAP. So with that being the case, it is a risk-free offer. If you'd like to take me up on that, go ahead and click the top link in the description or go visit the Yahoo Finance article, which will also be linked in the description. If that is not something you're interested in, that's totally fine too. Make sure you keep it locked here by clicking that subscribe button, click like. If you made it to the end of the video, make sure to comment and let me know. I'm gonna go eat, I'm starving, it's like five o'clock and I haven't even eaten breakfast yet, so I'm out. And I will talk to you guys in the next video. See you soon.